The title of this episode is You Won't Believe This. And that's right. What I'm going to do in this episode is absolutely going to blow your mind away, but you require patience for this and this patience will be well deserved. Okay? So here is where I left you last time. I had a current carrying loop and we calculated the magnetic field on the axis of that loop and this nasty equation is what it turned out to be. It looks pretty ugly now, but I'm going to leave it as it is over there. I'm not going to I'm not not going to fiddle with that for just for now. Instead, I'm going to talk about something completely seemingly unrelated thing. And that is about a magnet. It's been a long time since I've spoken about a magnet <laughs> and this is a course on magnetism, so it's high time I brought up the magnet. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to talk a little bit about a magnet this time. So, here is my magnet. Here it is. And you can see some things that I've already written down there. Let's clarify that. Although I've told you before that magnets don't contain some magical magnetic charges like a north charge and a south charge, which, which is a source and a sink for magnetic fields. For now, I want to just, you know, live in delusion. Yeah? I want to live in an ignorance. And I want to treat this to be identical to an electric dipole. Okay? Just like how an electric dipole is made up of a positive charge and a negative charge separated by some distance. I want to think of a magnetic dipole or a magnet just like in these terms and I want to calculate what is going to be the strength of the magnetic field created by this magnetic dipole at this point. And if this sounds familiar to you, it should because it's going to be exactly identical to what we did in electrostatics where we calculated the electric field on the axis of a dipole. So let's quickly do that, okay? So let me rub this guy and let's get to it. So to calculate the magnetic field this time due to this dipole, I need to know what's the magnetic field due to each quote unquote magnetic charge. And that's going to be exactly similar to what we would have for an electric field. The magnetic field due to QN, QN acts like a positive quote unquote magnetic charge and that magnetic charge is going to create a magnetic field. I'm gonna call that field, um, let's see, I'm gonna use yellow for that and I'm gonna call that magnetic field as B due to the North Pole and that's going to be just like the electric field, mu naught by four pi. In the electric field it was one by four pi epsilon naught times Q by R square, so it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be Q naught divided by R square. R is this distance from here to here. What is that distance? Well, this is Z and this distance is A, so that's Z minus A. So I'm gonna get Z minus A the whole squared. And just like how a positive charge creates an outward electric field, this positive, or not positive, north charge is going to create an outward magnetic field. So this is Bn. I'm sorry for that color mismatch, okay? So that's Bn, okay, that's outwards. Now, similarly, the south magnetic charge is also going to create its own magnetic field and that I will represent using a different color. Let me use this one. So that will be B south. Let me write that down here. And that's going to be having a similar formula, mu naught by four pi times Q south this time, divided by Z minus A, not Z minus. This time it's going to be this distance square from P to QS, and that's going to be Z plus A. So Z plus A the whole squared. And that's going to be in the opposite direction. It's, it's, it's pretty much like a negative charge, okay? That's going to act um, downwards, okay? So this is B south. Pretty much like a negative charge. And it's for that reason. Now the total magnetic field at this point is just going to be the difference between them. That total magnetic field, B total at point P is going to be the difference. And this guy is bigger. I hope you can see that, you know, because QN is closer. And QN and QS have the same magnitude, okay? They have opposite signs or whatever you want to call them, but they have the same magnitude. But they have the opposite sense, whatever that means. So we're gonna have mu naught divided by four pi into Q, that's, that's their you know, magnitude, whatever. Q and QS, same magnitude, right? So I'm just gonna call it as Q now. And uh, what remains inside is going to be one over Z minus A the whole squared plus, not plus, minus, I have to subtract, minus one over 
z plus a the whole square okay and for that reason i'm going to end up with vp to be equal to mu naught q divided by 4 pi times hmm what will i get well i will get in the denominator i will get z square minus a squared that's in the denominator and in the numerator i'm gonna get z plus a the whole squared z plus a the whole squared minus z minus a the whole squared okay that's what i get and now if i solve this further I'm going to end up with mu naught q divided by 4 pi times this difference, z plus a the whole square minus z minus a the whole square is just 4 times z times a. So divided by z square minus a square. Huh. All right. I hope it's right. 2az minus plus 2az. Yeah, everything is fine. Everything works out. All right, that's it. That's what I end up with. Z square. Oh, there's a square over here. I totally forgot about that square. There's a square over there. That's what I end up with. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go far away. So I'm going to go far away. So I'm going to make, I'm going to assume Z to be much, much bigger than A. In that limiting case, I'm going to end up with mu zero Q by four pi times um, numerator remains pretty much the same but in the denominator I can completely neglect that a square I get z to the power 4 and that cancels one of the z and I end up with mu 0 2 times 2 q a I think you know where I'm going with this I hope you know where I'm going with this mu 4 pi z cube and this 2 a q represents the dipole moment of this bar magnet alright so that's just the charge with the magnetic charge, the quote unquote charge, multiplied by the distance, all right? 2a is the distance, and that's why you have 2 here, okay? So this eventually is gonna, oh, I'm gonna run out of space over here. All right, let's try to wrap this up quickly. So this this is gonna give me, um, let's see, 2 times mu naught times the magnetic dipole moment m divided by 4 pi z cube. And we, we define the magnetic dipole moment to run from the south to north so this is the direction of the magnetic dipole moment and so you can see that the direction of the net magnetic field which is in this direction right that's the net magnetic field because this guy is stronger than this one and they are in the same direction right so so if i turn the magnet you know the magnetic field is also going to turn on the axis so m and b is going to have the same magnitude all this is something that we have done for electric field you know this is identical so you shouldn't have any problems with this. Eventually, okay, I'm, I'm gonna write down the final form over here, and that final form is going to be in the vector form. So the magnetic field at point P, anywhere on the axis, okay, I'm just gonna call that as the axis. On the axis of a magnet, as long as we are far away, it turns out to be two mu naught m divided by four pi z cube, all right, okay? So thanks for being patient because now I'm going to blow your mind away. Here comes the moment of truth. You see, I've kept this formula hanging, all right? And the reason I kept it hanging is because now I want to play with it. Now I'm gonna do the same trick that I did with the magnet. I'm gonna go far away. I'm gonna make Z much, much, much bigger than R. In that case, in the denominator, I can completely neglect R. And so now I'm going to end up with mu naught into 2 into i into pi r squared divided by 4 pi z cubed. Do you see why? Because r is 0, so z squared and the root cancels. And you get z cubed and hold your breath. Hold your breath because look at these two formula. Ah, what a shame. I can't see. I can't get them in the same the same. You know what I'll do? I'll, I'll just copy this. Okay, this formula is the due to the magnet, all right? So this is due to the magnet, due to magnet. And this guy is due to a current carrying loop. Oops, this one 
is due to current canning loop due to current loop all right so do you see the similarity i mean look at it you have a two you have a two you have a mu naught you have a four pi z cube the only difference is i have a i times pi r square and i have an m over here so let's just say that i times pi r square plays the same role as m well what is m m is the dipole moment and it's for that reason if i take the current and multiply by this area then you know what i'm going to get i'm going to get the dipole moment of this loop and if i do that the magnetic field is identical do you see that there is absolutely no difference between the magnetic field created by the current carrying loop and a magnet which share the same dipole moment so here's the thing if i had a box if i had a box and and this box was creating you know this magnetic field and i asked you what's inside the box well one obvious answer you could give is that there must be a magnet inside the box there oh my god there must be a magnet inside the box right well yes but that's one possibility something else that could compl that could exist in the box is a current carrying loop is a current carrying wire a, a, a circular loop it doesn't have to be circular actually it can be any loop as long as it's a current so it can be either a magnet or a current carrying loop a current loop because both of those guys give me exactly the same result S so a magnet and a current carrying loop give me identical result in other words they are the same things so this means what could be inside a magnet well the mystery i think is solved inside a magnet is a current carrying I, i've said too much i have said too much But yes inside a magnet is a current carrying loop that's the secret of a magnet you know what it turns out in reality in reality this thing doesn't even exist there is no magnetic charge so yes i i honestly i am i'm going to be honest with you no magnetic charge exists this doesn't exist um, it is nothing like that exists but magnetic dipole moment exists we have calculated it and that magnetic dipole moment actually originates from this so in reality it's a current carrying loop so inside a magnet is actually a current carrying loop but where does this current carrying loop come from and and, and why is it there inside the magnet and why is it not there inside inside other material why only some material are magnetic these are some amazing questions and you know what that opens up a whole new branch magnetostatics or or you know magnetism of matter and material and we're all we're going to get get to the bottom of that eventually but i think you know i've sort of answered the question of what's inside a magnet or what creates a magnetic field and or what's the source of magnetism the source of magnetism or a magnetic dipole i would say a source of magnetism is current but the source of a magnetic dipole is a current carrying loop that is the source of a current of a magnetic dipole so a current carrying loop itself creates a magnetic field so you know what this this acts like a bar magnet so i could just put a bar magnet over here and this in this bar magnet this part acts like the north pole and this part acts like the south pole and if you want to remember that just use your right hand rule where the circling th circling fingers give you the current direction this is the current and the thumb is going to represent the dipole moment this is going to be dipole moment and we calculate dipole moment you calculate the dipole moment as just the current you, you can see over here is the current multiplied by the area of that loop and it doesn't have to be a circular loop it doesn't matter even if you did the same thing with the square you can go far away and you can check yourself the same result works so uh, so this has been an amazing revelation and uh, i will see you next time stay tuned